Slow down, cars are coming fast now So when I walk I always hear her in the background These memories are really all I've known So if I had a genie I would wish to go back home Yo, what's going down, everybody? It is Straight Out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back with episode seven of the Jeff Samarja Connected Careers Mode. Get into year two with Jeff Samarja, and you can see there Matt Flynn actually starting. Tavares Jackson took his talents to North Beach, I guess. He went up to Minnesota, his old stomping grounds for the Minnesota Vikings, or I guess you say in the Metrodome. So he's back there. He has to progress to like an 80 overall, so maybe he'll actually do half decent there. But anyway, we got Matt Flynn studying for us now, but I really don't want to talk about the gameplay too much here because, I don't know, it's just kind of repetitive. And I, I don't know, I, I feel like when you do player-connected careers, it's not always focused on the gameplay so much. It's really more focused on kind of your player's highlights. So it's a little bit hard to talk about the gameplay sometimes. So that's why I'm going to talk about real-life NFL because it is Tuesday, the day that this will go up, and I kind of want to talk about the NFL, how it's going. Uh, I watched the Patriots game on Sunday, and I do want to say first of all that I'm not concerned about the Patriots at. W I I'm not concerned about the Patriots one bit, because uh, if you look at almost every year they've won, I really the only year that they've done the only two years that they've done successful, like really successful, and not struggled in September was 2004 when they started out seven and zero. And then 2007 when they went 16 0, but they obviously lost that year. But if you look at 2001, they started like 2 and 4. 2003, they started 2 and 2, and then won the rest of their game. Started that 21 game win streak. That was incredible. Uh, let's see. 2009, they lost to Dolphins in the Wildcat offense. 2010, they lost like some. They lost to the Jets for like this in week two. And they lost to the Browns in like week six, and everyone was like freaking out. Last year, they lost to the Bills, 38 to 35. Went they fell to two and one. Once again, everybody freaks out, and it, there's just no point in freaking out. They do this every year, and they always struggle in the preseason. Their offensive line always looks like crap, and then they just get it sorted out because Bill Belichick's an incredible coach. I mean, if you look at what he did last year with the team he had last year. Like, no really deep threat wide receiver. I know we really utilized Gronkowski and Hernandez well, but really no deep threat wide receivers, no uh, tons of injuries in the secondary. Ross High Dowling was out for, like, the year, and Patrick Chung was out for a while, and their defense was terrible last year, and they still went to the Super Bowl. So, I mean, you know, Bill Belichick had one of his best coaching years last year, so I really think that... You know, he's still at an elite coaching level, and they're, they're going to be fine. Just trust me on that. I, I guarantee you they will be fine. So, they also have the easiest schedule in the league. I mean, they don't they play the Niners in, like, week 13, the Texans, like, week 15 or something. But other than that, they have, they have the easiest schedule in the league. They might lose next week to the Ravens because if they can't get their, all, their offensive line sorted out, then, you know, the Ravens will be able to get enough pressure on them. But the Ravens have never had a good secondary, at least never ever since Chris McAllister retired. I mean, it's really Ed Reed and kind of some no-names, to be quite honest, but... Anyway, I mean, they have a couple. They have some good deck. They have some good guys, but they, they, you know, they don't have any Darrell Reeves or guys like that. So I'm not really too worried. I think the Patriots could win that game, but I don't know. I'll, we'll see. Kind of depends. But uh, in the real NFL, it has been a crazy week, guys. It was insane. I don't know if you guys realize like how insane this last week of football was. Okay, first of all. There were some of the craziest endings I've ever seen. The, the end of the Patriots game was nuts. The end of the Redskins Rams game was nuts. The end of the, let's see, the end of the Colts and Vikings game, which went completely under the radar, but Adam Vinatieri had a 53-yard field goal to win it. A 53-yard field goal? I don't think people understand, like, what happened that game. The Bengals-Browns game was surprisingly actually, like, decent. Um, I know there was a couple blowouts, but it was just an incredible week of football, and I really think that, I don't know, I was just, it was really fun to watch. I mean, getting the highlights and stuff, so... I think it's it's really interesting this year because there's a ton of one and one teams. I mean, the only two and zero teams I can think of off the top of my head are like the Chargers, the Cardinals. Uh, obviously, by the time I'm recording this commentary, Monday Night Football hasn't happened, but it is the one and zero Broncos going up against the one and zero Falcons. So one of those teams will walk out two and zero. My my prediction is the uh, Broncos are going to win that game because I'm really high on the Broncos this year. So you know, there's there's really only a handful of uh, two and zero teams. A lot of the teams like the Ravens, Steelers, Patriots. Um, who else? Let's see. Texans are two and zero, but the Packers, the Forty Nine ers are two and zero. The Packers are one and one. The Giants are one and one. Everybody's one and one. It's incredible. I don't know who to pick for my week three predictions. Like to be honest, I I don't know. You know, some teams just had like great first weeks and awful second weeks and vice versa. So I mean, it is you know, it's honestly kind of crazy. But 
Anyway, my Super Bowl pick has been looking good so far. I had the Texans beating the Niners in the Super Bowl to start the year. flip-flop on that because the Niners really, really impressed me so far these last two weeks. I think their offense is incredibly improved. I think Alex Smith is even better than he was last year. Added extra threats in Mario Manningham and Randy Moss. Michael Crabtree, if he if Michael Crabtree can stay healthy, he can be an incredible wide receiver. So you're looking at three really solid wide receivers there. Vernon Davis, obviously. Then you got tons of running back depth with Brandon Jacobs, Kendall Mart, Kendall Hunter, Frank Gore, Lamichael James if he can get healthy. I mean, that offense is stacked, to be quite honest. They have a nice offensive line. The 40 the Niners secondary isn't the strongest, but their front their front seven is so good that it almost makes up for it with the pressure they get on the quarterback. So I might actually change that. Uh, I really like the Texans though. Not, not too many people are as high on the Texans as I am, just because, I don't know, I guess people weren't impressed by their divisional playoff loss last year. I really thought that if Matt Schaub was healthy, they could have gone to the Super Bowl last year. They were like 8-3 and three with him, and they finished like, I don't know what they finished, but they were like 8-3 and three with him as a starter until he got hurt his foot or whatever. So, and they're only getting better. They're a young team. Foster's one of the best, if not the best, running back in the league. I don't know, it's kind of a flip, a toss-up between him and Ray Rice at this point. Unless you want to consider Adrian Peterson still there, I don't know. It really depends on what your views on injuries are, but their defense is young and only improving. Uh, it was a, it was an elite defense last year. I think it's one of the best. I, I give it. I say it's the second best defense in the league, just because the Giants' defense has been awful the first two weeks, and the Broncos could contend to that. Broncos are probably third on my list. The Niners are definitely first though, but. You know, you look at the front seven for the Texans; it's incredible. You look at the secondary; it's not inc- it's not the best, but you know, it gets the job done. So I really like the Texans and the 49ers this year. I don't know. You guys should let me know in the comments below who your Super Bowl picks are. Uh, I know I, I have the Texans beating the Patriots in the AFC Championship, and I have the Patriots actually beating the Broncos in the uh, AFC Divisional Round because I think the Broncos end up being the three seed, and they'll probably play in the Divisional Round as the Texans will probably play with the Ravens or the Steelers or something. And you know, I think they'll beat them, obviously, so because they are my Super Bowl pick. That's why I say obviously. But anyway, um, let me guys know. Let me know. Let let me know what you guys think of how the NFL's gone so far. How's your favorite team doing? What is your favorite team? Uh, mine's definitely the Patriots. Being from Boston, growing up in you know New England or whatever, it's definitely going to be the New England Patriots. So pretty fun. I've never been to a game. I'd love to go sometime. But if you guys don't live around here and you try to go into Foxborough on a Sunday, you're not getting out. It's it'll take three or four hours to get out. So that's why I've never gone to a game. I'm very very fine with watching them on my HD TV. You know, in my like heated room or air conditioned if it's hot out. You, you know, stuff like that. So I mean, I don't know. I would love to go to a game, but it it would you know. I don't know. I've, I've, I've been very content with sticking to Celtics and Bruins and Red Sox games for my entire life. But anyway, that is besides the point. So that's pretty much what I really want to talk about for the in terms of the real NFL. So we'll get into the gameplay here. We're in the neon greens against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You can tell Samarja, if you have been paying attention to the gameplay, have been doing absolutely ridiculous. Uh, just, I mean, I, I don't know. This this offense with an improved Jeff Samarja, we signed Malcolm Floyd. We still have Mike Williams and Sidney Rice. So Sidney Rice is like our fourth receiver. Marshawn Lynch, obviously. Matt Flynn's a lot better of a quarterback than Tavares Jackson, I can tell you that much. Doesn't throw nearly as many interceptions. I've also been kind of letting the offense run itself a little bit. I haven't been calling for so many pass plays. I haven't been calling for the ball in general so much. And uh, But, I mean, I'll call for it when I'm open like there, and I'll just run into the end zone for a touchdown. But we've been putting up, you know, 40 points after 40 points. Samarja's put up incredible stats. And, you know, it's just been a great, great, you know, great year so far. I feel like that was weird. But anyway, this video is also a little bit long just because there were so many highlights just doing so well. This is the last game of the episode. We're going up against the San Francisco 49ers. And I do believe that this is probably going to be the last year that we do with Jeff Samarja because I've kind of looked at the calendar schedule when I'm going to upload these videos the rest of the series. If there's about five or six videos left, then it'll be kind of at the end of the second season, right around the time NBA 2K13 comes out. I'm not really sure what I want to do with NBA 2K13 quite yet. I'm going to be doing either a my career, I guess it's called, or an association I, I don't know. Like, part of me wants to do association because I, I feel like a lot of people do my player, and I feel like I'm not really original enough to create the story with my my player. That would be kind of interesting. But at the same time, I don't know if you guys want to see, like, two franchises, essentially, with the Titans Connected career and the, you know, whatever team I would do an association with. So, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll put it up to a vote or something. Because I think either way, I'm going to do, like, one of each and just one I'll post and the other I'll... 
you know, just do on my own, but it's really all about what you guys want to see, what you guys are going to be entertained with. Anyway, maybe we'll do one for, like, a little bit and then start another one, like, at the trade deadline. I, I don't really know, because I've said this before. Like, at the point when 2K13 comes out, there aren't really any big sports games that come out until MLB 12. So, we got a lot of time. We got a lot of time to kind of do whatever we really want to do. We don't have to worry about new games coming out. We can really extend. I really want this Titans series to go really, really far. Like, you know, three, four, five, six, seven seasons. Something crazy like that. That would be awesome. I really think it could. I really think it has the potential, too. I love playing it. I love editing it, too. I don't know. Just think about it. Like, I get through the videos fast just because I love editing it. Maybe it just seems like it's fast because, like I said, I love editing it. Do you guys know I love editing this video? <laughs> Good one. But anyway, so we'll see. We'll see when we get there. I don't want to plan too far ahead. But you can see there Matt Flynn's numbers. And Samarja, as always, just going deep, beating the defensive backs. Uh, this isn't all Madden. I am using the custom sliders that I... Uh, have, I put the video up for it, and I put the video, I put the link to that video with my custom sliders in them in the description of every single video. They're from Operation Sports by a guy named Jared21 or Gerard21. If you guys did not know, but I have the link to the video in there, and then I have the link in that video to the original th uh, forum thread, so you guys can check it out from there. You can use them if you want. I really like them. They're great sliders. The ones I use are a little bit harder than All Madden, but they're still hella, hella fun. And uh, it's not too cheesy. I lowered the uh, interceptions a little bit because I think the original one is 80. And they said that if you were struggling with interceptions, turn it down to 65. So I think I did that because I kept throwing like five interceptions with Jake Locker. And I don't know, part of it's just like me forcing the ball too much. But anyway, this gameplay is wrapping up pretty soon actually since there's only about eight minutes left in the th uh, fourth quarter. But this game ended up being a pretty nice game. You can see some Marja trying to run some clock, time up the clock, really just showboating. And he's going to pick up another touchdown there. We go up 33 to 23. Flynn once again drops back. He's going to find Samarja over the middle this time. And Samarja's going to pick up another huge chunk there. I really like playing this wide receiver. I don't know. Just wide receiver in general is really fun to play. It's not too hard either, which is nice. And you can see there we're going to pick up another touchdown this time. Go up 40 to 23. And I'm not quite sure if there are any other highlights. There. It looks like there are 45 seconds left. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Samarja's going deep. Once again, he's going to be tackled right there. And then I believe we would actually end up throwing an interception after this. But I know it's going to wrap this game. We end up winning 40 to 37. We are 4-0 on the year. Let's see what we can do in this potential last season with the Seattle Seahawks or just with Jeff Samarja in general. So that's going to wrap it up for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Those them out. Peace.